Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined today by my co-hosts, Brandon, Brandon. James, Kamran, and Justin. How you guys doing, guys? We're all one co-host. Yeah, we're just... Uh, <laughs> You're one, like, like morph together, just it's, blob of people. It's morphing yeah. time. Yeah. My clay face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Justin, introduce yourself, since it's been a while since you've been on here. Yes. A little bit, yeah. Hi, I'm Justin Williams, and, um, yeah, just a special guest here to talk some nerdy shit. Kamran. Huh? I am Kamran Shushtar. I am the host of Sutra Side Talk and also here to talk about some fun DC stuff. James. And I am James Seelig, co-host of Sutra Side Talk. Uh, and I will hopefully be able to follow along with the DC st- uh, talk. <laughs> I love the DC characters and stuff, but I'm not nearly as well versed as you guys are. Uh, you saw the trailers, right? Yeah. I did, at least. Yeah, There's yeah. We, t- we talked about it. I got excited. <laughs> yeah. And Brandon. Brandon Moncada. All Not, right, moving on, guys. Anyways, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who cares about? It? No, I was just your just your everyday co-host for Danny as usual. <laughs> All right, so to talk to start things off with some fun DC news, let's talk about DC Direct shutting down and everybody losing their jobs there. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, fun times. Forgot, that's kind of old news, but we forgot to talk about it in the last episode, and I really would like to just uh, touch upon that because since I'm a big, I love. DC Direct's been around forever. So this is sad. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of it's been said already, but who wants to lay it out first? I think we'll start with Brandon, then we'll go Justin, then Kamran, then James, then back to me. Okay. Uh, Well, I pretty much said everything that I felt about it already on previous episodes between here and Apollo City, you know? Mm -hmm. And realistically i still stand by my point i think that uh for anybody who doesn't know basically D- dc laid off like what one third or one half of their entire like staff in the comics division and they yeah. fired everybody from the dc universe app yes and yeah. they and they closed dc direct and if for yeah. those of you who don't know dc direct is uh pretty much dc's like personal action figure line it's not like like a the other ones were like, you know, they, they, they sell off their rights to the figures to like McFarlane toys or, or who was the one before that? I think it was Mattel. Yeah. Their last toy. So this is their, them personally uh, manufacturing this stuff. And uh, they've been around for, like I said, a, a while, I think like the early two thousands, I they've been around. Oh since. yeah. It was almost a good 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So. But uh, I still stand by what I said. You know, I think, DC fandom was bound to happen no matter what, but they were like, okay, let's really shove DC fandom into everyone's face to like negate the fact that we just fired all these people from our company, you know, to like really like just shine some light on all this good stuff and kind of make people forget and just realize that like there's stuff going on on DC, even though we got rid of a bunch of people. Oh, by the way, DC Universe is canceled. We're going to go all HBO Max completely. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, like, that's just how, like, I get it. It's a business at the end of the day. Comic books don't make money. We all know that. And it makes me sad because don't there's a lot that. of... God. They, they make money. If anything, they break I even. I know. I know. Not, yeah, we all know that's not where the cash is. So... It makes me sad because there's so many voices that are bound to be heard, you know, through comics. And there's so many creators out there that still want a chance to write some of their favorite superheroes and create new ones. And to basically get rid of a platform on top of that that's dedicated to that medium or, you know, the the DC Comics universe in general, it sucks. It really does. And to me, again, fandom has some awesome stuff, but I just feel like they're like let's just all act like it never happened and just show off all these new trailers right so that's my take on it justin what do you think um i I really wasn't into the uh you know dc direct was just hearing about it now it's um it does suck you know it's a lot of people that yeah lost their jobs and everything but um you know as things change as things start to um you know more digital everything you know it's um that's one of the hardest things with um with things changing and businesses trying to adapt 
you know, and trying to, you know, find their place in the new world is, you know, stuff like that happens, man. Yeah. It's going to be some casualties. Yeah. Yeah. Kamran? Uh, pretty much like it does suck, especially like all those people got laid off and you could tell they're looking at, oh, how can we still make a bunch of money, but we don't need this many bodies, especially like HBO Max is probably taking over whatever is left of DC Universe if it just becomes a glorified comic app. Um, in regards to like DC Direct, I'm not too sure how to feel just because I was never that big into figures. Like the most I got into it was like the... I think Greg Capullo, Talon, and Nightwing designs, because I just love those. Um, but just making sure, because I actually don't know myself, the did that include, like, the line that was, like, the black and white statues and stuff like that? Yes, because they did statues and figures and busts okay. and stuff. So all like, those... They had a, yeah, all the collectibles. Yeah, all those statues you saw at Comic-Con last year, Comrade? All like pretty much that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> did they? I actually don't know. So, do they say what's going to happen to that They're kind of stuff? They probably license out to other companies. Yeah, it's I mean, they already those. have licensed everything out to like probably other companies, but this yeah. was just their direct. Uh, you're buying directly from DC. Yeah, their so. first party stuff. Yeah. No, but that that does suck, especially just because it seemed like you know give give out the more. I guess affordable things out there and then they all of a sudden they would have all the like quality care stuff that they put out directly um and hopefully is like I said it sucks for everyone that lost their jobs but it also I guess for the consumer uh hopefully they still get to retain the quality of what they were looking for previously right James I don't know how much I can add that you guys didn't already cover it just I agree. It it really sucks that so many people lost their jobs in like one fell swoop. I I never really got into collecting uh, figurines or statues, although I really, it's mostly because they would sometimes be more expensive than I'd like to spend, but I would at least appreciate the artistry of them. Like Cameron mentioned the black and white line. I've seen a few of those and they are really cool looking. And it's just kind of sad that a bit of that like fan culture is going to not maybe not necessarily die out. Cause like you said, it, it, they could just license out the stuff to other manufacturers, but I don't know. It's, it's just sad. And, but like at the same time, Brandon was, I agree with Brandon. It is odd that they would do DC fandom and try to make it seem like nothing is wrong. Cause had you guys not told me that there were a bunch of layoffs uh, on our, um, like pre fandom episode, I would have watched fandom and just been like, Oh wow. DC is doing amazing. Their movies. They, uh, they got like a bunch of trailers coming out. They're about to overtake okay. Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. just weird. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. But uh, moving on to our next thing, we have the suicide squad game. I hate it. So <laughs> you hate it. I am so just what? Pissed off. Like, okay, okay. Really? Let's, let's go. Just <laughs> he's ready to throw his hat <laughs> on the ground. Okay, to let Danny's anger build up even more, let's go in order <laughs> from. Uh, let's start with James and work our way back around <laughs> and go back to Danny. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's just do that. I'm just gonna just hulk out here while. This. He's shaking. He's quivering. I'm gonna mute my. I'm gonna mute my uh, microphone so you just see me just screaming on yeah. the thing while you guys Start, talk. See right. things get thrown in the back. But uh, all right. Yeah. So James, back around. What do you uh, think about this overall? Because so we did talk about it in the other podcast. We did. So, yeah. So um, the overall. My opinion back on the other uh, podcast was like, I I'm just not a fan of every game needing to be multiplayer co-op experiences nowadays i prefer being like a single player game that tells me of a good story and right. stuff like that everything and i mean if this game now. can tell me a good story and I'll, I'll be perfectly happy but and especially the fact that like they showed off brainiac in the very beginning i he's one of my favorite uh dc villains for whatever reason i i just think he's really really interesting so i like that he's there but <laughs> Everything around that, I'm just like, why, why is the Suicide Squad 
handling this. <laughs> it doesn't, it's, it's I don't know point. that much about the Suicide Squad, but this doesn't seem like one of their missions that they would do. And uh, oh, what else? I'm also just really confused that this game is technically in the Arkhamverse, but not Arkham, no, Gotham Knights, which seems like it's a direct sequel to uh, uh, Arkham Knight, but I guess we could uh, come back to that later for the next one. Right. When we talk about that. Comrade? Yeah. Yeah. So you see, I James, you the guys, multiverse of I games. I was hoping you guys would have remembered <laughs> yeah. the the rotation the order. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. dude. I I failed kindergarten when I came to that stuff. You know. Oh, dude, you too. Yeah. Oh, they, oh. Awesome. The colors they confused me. Yeah, I know. But, I was that kid putting the square in the circle shape. Oh, uh, dude, the <laughs> story of my life, right? But uh, I, I'm interested. Like, I've never been a big Suicide Squad person, but over. The, I guess the last couple of years have gained more and more interest in them. I think mainly because of the, like the Harley Quinn show they have now. And if like Tom King's doing the comics now, or is about to stop doing the comics now already. But I, I like the idea of having these different characters you can utilize. I don't, I was apprehensive when it came to the co-op just because I want a story first single player first game and i think it seems like if it's like gotham knights they just want to include that implementation to have co-op but i'm hoping it stays single player otherwise i'm interested in the premise it sounds interesting i'm also curious how it ties into the arkham world really so i'm i'm interested i'm not as excited if they announce like an arkham game but i'm excited to see finally another game from rocksteady and I trust at least them so far, given their track record. All right. Um, for me, I I loved it. I mean, it was a really good trailer, you know, to a uh, a video game. And as far as like um like a co op game goes, I mean, it'll make sense if you're gonna do a game about a team that you would give people the option to, you know play with you know other people and stuff too um but uh, but also remember that this was just a trailer none of this was an actual gameplay so we still don't even really know what the game is gonna actually look like and how it's gonna play out but just um just off of the trailer i mean the tone was cool you know it was um just really bright and, and you know has some jokes in there that i felt landed really well um you have outcast playing yeah yeah <laughs> outcast playing in the back um you had uh you know they kept dead shot black i was like cool cool i'm all, i'm all in now um and apparently um samoa joe is going to be king shark so i was like all right that yeah, it lo- interests me even more but um, yeah it just looks like a really fun game so yeah and also the new powers, the the new the the new powers. I was like, okay, obviously this is for you know um, having it be a video game. Like Boomerang now, like teleports to where he throws his um, his uh, his boomerang at. Yeah, it was so weird. Yeah, that was surprising. I was like, okay, that's obviously for the video game. Mother yeah. box technology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like. Tape a mother box to it. It's ready to go. There you go. <laughs> it's a boomerang taped to a mother box. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, I agree with you, Justin. Um, you got anything else you want to say on it? Um, just that, yeah, I mean, it just looks fun. That was, that was pretty much the, the, that's really the main thing that they were doing. While the Arkham games seemed like a little more serious, um, you know, fun that way with, um, you know, all the violence and everything, this one just seems a little more jokey, which kind of fits when, like, one of your lead characters is Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um. What was I going to say? So I don't know how to feel about it, to be honest. Because I, I, I said this before, I hate when they announce games and you never get gameplay. I hate that so much when it's just a flashy... Like, the CG trailers are awesome. They look cool and they're fun to watch. Don't get me wrong. I just hate when it's a game, they should show gameplay. You know, So 95% of games. Yeah, 95 That's why I don't bother with E3 half the time. Because I'm like, okay, it's like 30 minutes of trailers and like 5 minutes of actual gameplay. But... That's an exaggeration, of course. But, uh, 
Like, I don't know. I, I don't like it when the publishers try to push these characters really hard when, like, no one really talks about Suicide Squad. And then the movie came out. <laughs> yeah. And to me, it felt like a reaction to Guardians of the Galaxy at the time. Uh, I know this is a little off topic, but basically it just, it felt like DC did that and now they got to commit. Mm. They're like, okay, we made a movie about really obscure characters and now now that we have, we have to keep putting them out there because now you know about them and we're going to keep doing this, you know? Not to say people haven't known about these characters, but to go as far as making a game, I'm still not sure yet. Because that's, it's... That's fair. Yeah, because they're, they're obviously trying to write off the synergy between the movie coming out the year before and then the game coming out a year after. That make, they did the same thing with Arkham Asylum and Dark Knight back in 2008 and 2009. Yeah, true. So, and we were fortunate enough to have both a really good movie and really good game at the time. Right. And not to say the movie and game aren't going to be good. I just get scared with stuff like this because when they're like, you guys got to make this kind of game and it has to be this kind of thing, like multiplayer and all this, you're kind of like telling the studio, like, yeah, you got free time to, or you got the, you got like the freedom to do what you want with this, but you still got to stay within these certain parameters of like four player co-op open world using the suicide squad characters specifically you know right corporate control over uh creative control exactly so again maybe i'm wrong and it's gonna be an amazing game you know and it does look fun compared to like the arkham series which was a lot more serious and maybe had like two jokes in its entirety i have no doubts that like suicide squad kills the justice league is gonna be a funny game and it's gonna you know it's going to have its moments like seeing Deadshot with the jetpack. I was like, I've never seen that before, but I'm down with it, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, or the the teleporting uh Captain Boomerang, like sure. Like I don't know how that's going to work, but for gameplay, as Justin said, for gameplay, sure. I'm down with that too. That realization that they're going after Superman was hilarious. Yeah. Right. That was and they yeah. look so terrified. I just <laughs> figured out we're gonna kill you. I know, right? I just had like a crazy idea. What if this ends up being like Left for Dead, but with the Suicide Squad? They said it was supposed to be like an action shooter kind of game. Apparently, uh, it well, could be so. good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, a lot of uh, cannon fodder to shoot at. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So it did maybe... show off like Brainiac zombies or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so you got Brainiac zombies plus the Justice League. Yeah, uh, and I'm I'm one of those people that never wants to just assume something's going to be really good because of the hype or assume it's going to be bad because of something, you know, we're not sure about yet. So I'll wait and play. I'm Like I said before, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it, and I'll most likely like it. It's just I get scared because I don't know right now if it's going to, you know what I mean? Like it's, right. Right. you, you want to like it. You want it to be good. So like cautiously optimistic? Yeah, that's usually my approach when it comes to video game announcements. The 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 cautious the cautiously optimistic approach because you're like okay i want it to be good so let's hope so (laughs) right yeah but um i just hope at the end of the day it was rocksteady going to wb and saying we want to make a suicide suicide squad game and not wb going to rocksteady saying make a suicide squad game you know (laughs) i think it was because they've been teasing this since arkham origins and it sounds yeah. like that they've been really working on this a long time. So. Oh, dude, it's going to be seven years. Yeah. Because uh, Arkham Knight came out 2015, and this yeah. game isn't coming out until 2022. So we don't know if it's been seven to ten years of working on this at this point. Right. It's just hella empty. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's what just, happened? They spent seven years on this. Rocksteady has skipped every E3 and, like, every Comic-Con and all that until now. So, like... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it says something. I'm more excited to play Gotham Knights in a way, but yeah. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, the game will probably be fun, and it's just, I just hope it's good, and I just hope that you know that that those like corporate hands don't dig into it too much to ruin the gameplay, and that they let them have the creative freedom to do the cool stuff, you know. And with all that said, I like the characters. I dig the designs. I think it's all awesome, and yeah right so anyways <laughs> here we go i am so god damn sick and tired of evil superman it is a lazy uh, thing to do because people don't know how to write superman 
So they're just like, let's just make him evil. But this time Brainiac's controlling him. Yeah. And it seems like the whole league as well. Just like that Static Shock episode. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Oh my God, you're right. I'm so sick of it. But the the trailer did look beautiful. The graphics looks really good, but it it is a CGI trailer. Um, I am confused of how this is going to fit into the Arkhamverse because Arkham Knight really wrote them into a corner. Well, and in a way, so did Arkham City. Because Batman's pretty much dead. <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. <Is> spoilers. <laughs> uh, Joker's late. Dead. Spoilers. And, you know, Joker's dead too. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like a soft reboot of the Arkhamverse. Uh, I I said on um, I forget which one it was. Uh, oh, it was the Apollo City podcast because we switched off. It was part one. Yeah, yeah, it was part one on the part one of like uh, our favorite moments. I said it looks like a post Arkham City pre Arkham Knight time frame. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because it's like it's weird because Batman's still alive apparently. Like I, at first I thought he wasn't, but everyone told me he was like one of the posters or whatever, so he'll be in the game. Yeah. Wait, have we yeah. gotten more posters than just the one with the crosshairs on Superman? Yeah, we got a Batman one and a Wonder Woman one. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking that it's going to be like a soft reboot. And the reason why I do say this too is because Deadshot mysteriously changed races between Arkham, I think Arkham City and and Suicide Squad. Yeah. So I'm thinking that it's going to be a, it's going to be like, it is the same universe you're, you know, you're familiar with, but it's going to be like, you know, Batman's still alive, the Joker's still alive, and it's going to be more of a DC universe thing with like the same mm, gameplay see. mechanics just with st- different stuff added in and i like all the designs and i'm really i like that they actually made like deadshot have a character it feels like he has more of a personality than than i think we're used to seeing in like arkham city and even the suicide squad movie uh harley quinn seems like a lot of fun king shark seems like a ton of fun i'm yeah <laughs> i want to see him in the movie now like i'm really He's excited cool, to see what what they're going to do with him. I wonder if he'll be a Superman fanboy in the movie, too. Yeah. Superman, not a good inspiration to us all. <laughs> I know. I didn't know that uh, King Shark even had that kind of personality, so... Well, if you watch the Harley Quinn cartoon, yeah, he's one of the main he... characters. Yeah. yeah. And he's a very fun... Yeah, he's a he's a fun character. He's great. Yeah, so yeah. it all looks like they have a ton of chemistry, the way they work off of each other, and I think that is a great moment when they realize that Superman's, like, evil. <laughs> Yeah, it was such a good moment. I I just I yeah. just hope for awesome boss fights. Like you have to right. work co op to take down a Justice League member each time. Taking down like, Superman yeah. should be the final boss. Yeah, like Probably. make yeah, like fighting. Uh, yeah, fighting the various yeah. Justice League uh, members should be like huge set piece moments. Green Lantern. I'm very yeah. curious. Is it going to be the classic? Like, is it going to be like the main seven, or is it going to kind of differ? And you'll have like randomly like Hawk Hawk Girl and uh, I don't know like. Maybe even will Mark's Cyborg be Justice League or will Cyborg be like he's pretty much Team part Titans. of the Justice League? He's yeah. pretty much part of the Justice League now. I could so see them could doing the there. original seven, but at the same time, I could also see them just doing the movie lineup. Yeah, because mm. well, Cyborg's been part of the Justice League for a good minute since it, yeah. uh, to my knowledge, he's, yeah, 2011 easily. He's been a permanent member, so Almost he could be in the decade. game. He's always yeah. been one of those members that kind of shows up like later <laughs> on in the Justice League's career. Yeah, or like uh, they always put like Hawk Girl and Hawkman in and out of the Justice League as well. Yeah, Martian Manhunter. Like, yeah, Martian Manhunter. Martian and... Manhunter is usually always the one that stays. Yeah, I feel Green... like the five for sure will be Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, Green Lantern, Flash, and Aquaman. Just I don't know why I think this. So I think that they're gonna make Batman the main villain of the game and make him the main, <laughs> the final boss. I just have like Probably. there's something about to tell me that DC would do that. Yeah. It's also Maybe rock like, cities like they still are coming off of that. <laughs> like, oh, you know, we know. Yeah. yeah. But so who so knows? Batman makes money. All right. Yeah. It okay. makes money. It's all Batman shit. And, this thing. And like, yeah, like we don't know. For all we know, they could put like Green Arrow in the game. You know, as a Justice That'd League cool. member. Yeah. yeah. I like, would like to see a fight between Green, uh, Green Arrow and uh, Deadshot. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, plastic man. Yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> I yeah. really hope that we get uh, actually Zatanna because of the magic. That would yeah, be really it could be. That would be really too. cool. And then but, uh, I really hope that Deadshot or not Deadshot, Deathstroke shows up in the game. 
Right. It's the yeah. it was the big tease for Arkham Origins. Like, yeah. I actually I was expecting him over any of the other ones we've seen. That was yeah. what I was very. Yeah. That was what was surprising. But we we can guarantee like the main ones: Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and like you know yeah. Flash maybe. And then after that, it's all speculation. It made me even more sad too because that's an awesome Superman design in that game. Like it oh. looks so clean. Oh. I just want a Superman game. Remember what that one that got canceled? Yeah, yeah. Rocksteady had a Superman game that they had in a, that they were working on after Arkham Knight, and they canceled it. I think they'll probably mm-hmm. do like it. Just it seems like they did an Arkham trilogy, so now they're kind of like maybe they'll do one shots now. So we'll get like after Suicide Squad, maybe a Superman or Wonder Woman game. Like I think either of those would work perfectly. Yeah, so I hope so too. What were you going to say, Justin? Me, they did a, the Superman look like John Cena. <laughs> yeah look at the trailer he, again it's that look chin his face yeah i'll have to watch it again. i don't know i couldn't see it because he looked like john cena i couldn't see it it was invisible <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> yes. on that note moving on to uh gotham knights it looks i mean there, hey everybody there's your court of owls games you guys were all everyone right. was waiting yeah. for uh, i told that man <laughs> I told Justin this on Facebook. I was like, he could finally get his Red Hood game. Indeed, just, yes. Yeah. About well, time. It just bothers me, though, <laughs> because I'm just like, this seems like that should be the the sequel to Arkham Knight. It's very yeah. simple to do, yeah. yeah. Just have them save the city while he's dead. That's all you got to do. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, really especially is. since like the beginning of the trailer is literally like, Bruce Wayne is dead, and he leaves uh, right. his will to the Bat family. Yeah, all right, uh, well... Who wants to kick off thoughts overall on it? Who wants to go first? Oh, I'll do it. Okay, there we go. Go for it. Just finally, finally, that we get more, more of the Bat family and, you know, other media, you know, because when they do that, then that means they're just going to keep, you know, put them in movies, put them in shows, because we have done Batman to death. I mean, literally, in this game. (laughs) We have literally done so much Batman. It's like, I would love to see Nightwing. I would love to see the Red Hood, uh, Red Robin, like, you know, let the the Batgirl, you know, let's get get some, spread the love around. And, um, you know, the fact that we have the Court of Owls, which, you know, hey, it kind of makes sense. Batman's gone, so the Court of Owls now, you know, decides to pop up and become, you know, put their face out there and yeah it kind of makes sense and they have you know a bunch of of uh cannon fodder to fight too as well that'll keep you you know inter- interested you know have your guys just you know go crazy and do all these crazy moves um it's you know you actually see gameplay in this one it looks you know pretty much just like an arkham game just that again um you're giving these people powers um, just like uh, randomly in Suicide Squad. And it's like, okay, this is just, clearly this is just for the game. You know, um, Tim Drake can, you know, just can um, camouflage. Um, what was it? Batgirl had like an energy pulse thing that she was throwing out there. It was like, okay, you know, for the video game, sure, why not? You know, get have some fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's also been noted real quick. Uh, Red Hood does not kill in that game. I'll just say that. Uh, I don't know how you do that with bullets, but okay. Cover <laughs> bullets, oh boy. Yeah, well, well, we'll if you get look to at it. his guns, they're clearly lasered guns. Yeah, I'll get <laughs> to mean, it later. I still can't get over the fact that Batman hasn't killed anybody with these giant ass metal like knives on the end of his like <laughs> wrists or whatever. If you seen the what was it, the Patton Oswald? Yeah, <laughs> he just like throws a battering and he's like <laughs> splits the guy's neck. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he's, just, he's just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sleeping. Look at that guy. Just tuckered out. So so does it bother you that they're making all these crazy powers, like the teleportation and all that? Or are you fine with it? Uh, I mean, like, it's been a while since I've actually really been in the video games. Um, but I can just see the, the reason for it. You know, because you're playing a video game and you're not doing, like, you know, Call of Duty you know what I'm saying, crouching around, you know, realistic type stuff. You kind of want theatrics and, you know, some fun things to do to help you, you know, move around. So, like, you know, in the last game, uh, Deadshot has a jetpack. Uh, Harley Quinn has, like, a grappling hook. And, you know, Boomerang is, you know, zipping around with, you know, teleportation. And um, what's him call it? Um, Tim Drake is, you know, camouflaging and stuff. 
I, I, I see the point, you know, with just trying to keep the video game fun, fresh, and just, you know, um, for the people who are not so heavy into the comics, for the people who are just like, you know, want to just have a fun video game to play, to keep them intrigued for the masses, I can see why they would try to, you know, want to make that decision. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Makes sense. Who so else? Who, I'll who else? Jump in next. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped because I'm a Nightwing fan and a Court of Owls fan, so I'm just like, oh yes, and I'm sure I get to see some interesting story stuff with both of those, uh, with Nightwing and like the Court kind of together. If you ever read like the New Fifty Two comics, but yeah. uh, the interest, like the co op stuff, once again, like it sounds like they said the single player will take uh, the front and center and co-op's just optional it's not even four player which at first we were kind of all expecting since you have like four characters to choose from but it's just like two i think um the combat's interesting with like the gadgets now it feels like there's a, a third tree where before it was like kind of small time detective gadgets with uh the co- main like melee combat but now there's more like powery gadgets that allow you to do like the cloaking the and everything else but I'm curious just to have the difference of playing each character and the premise does seem interesting, but like I said, I'm also like, you could have just put that together with everything else. I feel like people are going to be confused easily with like, is this in this universe? Is the Suicide Squad in that universe? Like what, what goes where in the timeline or is there a timeline or do they just go, I just want to play the game. But overall, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to, jump into Nightwing's boots and go all over the place. Cool. Uh, I guess I'll keep it going. Uh, so I think it's interesting. M- very interesting that it's not connected to the Arkham games, like I said earlier. But eh, uh, I was initially worried when they showed off the four characters standing next to each, co- each other because I thought like, oh no, is it going to be like a four-player co-op? Like every level you got to play with other uh, players. But it sounds like that's not like the main focus of this. It sounds like they're focusing more on the story and you can play by yourself, but like you could just choose which of the four characters you play as. And if you want, you could play co-op. So that sounds kind of fun. I like the idea that they have four different characters and that they tried to kind of diversify them a bit with different gadgets for each one. They all have different abilities. So maybe if you get tired playing as Nightwing, who I'm going to want to play as initially, probably maybe I could play Red Hood for a while and see what playing around with guns is like, or maybe I get tired of him and I Don't see what, people. like, yeah, and I can <laughs> see what Batgirl's doing, or like how she works around or how she works. But like, I don't know. Uh, I am excited for it mostly because I liked all the Arkham games. They were just, despite, or regardless of story, they were at least fun to play. And yeah. we have seen that um, WB Montreal can make an Arkham game because they made Arkham Origins, and that game was basically indistinguishable from any of the other games in the series uh, in terms of quality so i'm excited uh i get another game that's not exactly an arkham game but it's kind of an arkham ish game i don't know i'm looking yeah. forward to it yeah. um so moving on to the movies <laughs> get this shit over with the snyder <laughs> cut <laughs> Snyder. well the biggest movies are like what suicide squad snyder cut i'm a i'll let comron have the floor on this one oh, oh my god Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Which movie first? Huh? Yeah, which movie first? The Snyder. No, I said moving on to the movies. The Snyder Cut. So let's, the Snyder get it, cut. Right. let's get it over with. Let's get All right. It. I'll, if you want the long version, go to the Apollo Comics episode. I know, right? <laughs> You'll never <laughs> escape me. Uh, but I'll just say uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, it. I was. I loved it. I loved what I saw. Uh, everything that I've been kind of hoping for, at least seems like it's being addressed in the, the tr- from what I saw in the trailer and the quality. And as someone who has been like, I was one of those people that had the release of Snyder cut in my Twitter bio. Like I was in it. I bet you did. Oh, I, oh, I was <laughs> all in there. <laughs> but it was, it, 
I was happy. I was very happy. All the teases like before it that were like leading up to it. Just I was got the blood pumping and I'm just like, don't let me down. Don't let me down. The blood pumping. Blood pumping. <laughs> and this I was like, let's this go. This heart rate went all the way up. <laughs> yeah, it was like a doctor's like, are you okay? Um, but, Snyder cut. Oh, then, he flat, then, he just, then he just flat lines right after. <laughs> Snyder cut. <laughs> Quick, play the Man of Steel theme. We'll get him back. But uh, oh, yeah, no, it. I I'm very I'm very excited for this. Uh, it's coming next year, and it's I was kind of not I wasn't expecting it to be released in four parts because it's basically like the equivalent of four hours. So it's like four uh, hours. I know I'm. So, you know, so, what movies four hours. Return of the King. Exactly. And that movie's good, it's and it's so still. Good. <laughs> Return of the King is still four hours, and that movie's good, and it still feels like the longest thing ever. I am so sure. the longer the better. I say. Oh so god, I'm, re- I'm ready. Let's go. I love uh, the fact that it's Lord of the Rings Ooh. extended edition length. I'm just like I'm I'm floored. But they got Ben Affleck in there. They got everyone else. Uh, let's go. Uh, there's nothing more I can say. I'll just keep like I said. I'll keep it light. But my excitement level is up the roof, out of the roof. It's in space. All right. So before I end this man's whole career, I see. I see that. <laughs> I can see that Brandon wants to say something. Okay. Go ahead, Brandon. Uh, I remember having this conversation real, really random, but I don't know if Justin remembers. He, w- I walked in the room at the break room at work when we worked together, and he was like, Man of Steel is a good-ass movie. And I was like, <laughs> I said, hold up. And I was like, <laughs> I, 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 I was like, wait a minute, let me... And then huh? he turned around and was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, I was like, hold on. Brandon was just like, so you have chosen death. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> so so this is how we're going to handle things. Got it. <laughs> yeah, no. I got to like this big argument with like two other people about it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it got pretty crazy. Yeah. But no, I don't hate those movies. I just, and like I, the whole story behind this whole thing, like I really don't hate the whole Snyder verse of DC movies. I just think they could be better by like a lot. It's just, I, and, and with everything that's happened, I understand why we were given the movie that we got, right? My big thing, and I'm saying on record, I don't think he should have just made a movie. I think he should have just made a TV show at this point. This guy wants to cram so many story arcs and like so many different things going on into one film. It is too much for one movie. And if he wants it to be like some six hour epic, sure, that's fine. But like, I think if, at this point they might as well just commit. Put your hand down. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have already spoken to the classroom, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> no, like seriously though, it seems like he's wanting to make this crazy ten-hour saga, and it's like at this point, why even bother trying to make a movie? Just make a TV show, like a very I'm, expensive TV show. Ex- yeah, a very expensive. They already TV have all the show. footage. Yeah, and they already have the footage. They're adding more to the debt. <laughs> Well, like four episodes. I, I right. get it. I just, again, I'm not trying to, I've, I can't say this enough. I think Zack Snyder is a cool guy. I think he's very passionate about making movies and he can make good movies. I've seen them. And I just think all one of them. All. <laughs> oh, okay. It. Okay. Two, two. He made two good no. movies. No, a few. man of steel he's is genuinely not a, a bad, guy. it's not a I bad movie. It's just man of steel tries to be like, Batman, but Superman the movie. You know, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just trying to make you know Superman as Batman, and I think that's not the way to approach it. But that's a different topic. All right, all right, fine. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, it's just you know, again, as a film, <laughs> as a film, it's not terrible or anything. It's just doing a lot of different things that don't make kind of sense to me. But that's again, different, different can of worms to open. It's just. With the, the whole Justice League thing, I think the movie just got too messy in the process of like making it. When you got like one director who had to leave and then another director having to like create something else with something that was already made. And I, I, I still think that like it's unfortunate what happened to Zack Snyder. And I really do think they should have just paused production while he had time to like grieve and figure out how to go about things and like have time with his family. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think if WB was just like, okay, 
a very tragic thing happened. We need to give you time and space to have the prop, you know, to grieve and work things out and figure out what to do next. And then I'm pretty sure if they did that and then just let him finish the movie when he was ready to, we would have had something way better. And he could have made his grand epic film, you know? Well, they wanted to make their bonus too. But they, yeah, but that's the thing. They're a big corporation. They're like, you know, oh, well, you know, that happened. So we're just going to push the movie out anyways. And they were they're going up against cocaine. Infinity War too. Yeah. yeah. yeah so they start their cocaine and catch Marvel. Uh, they're like, let's go catch up. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> like, Basically, that's what it came down to. It was like, all right, guys, we got to keep going. Steamroll everything. Get, get to the financial year. Sure. Sir, these yeah. aren't good. What do you mean? Yeah, so I think my main thing is you've got this film that got all tore up, and now you're just throwing more into it, and I don't know if that's really going to help it. <laughs> like, uh, the, that's my yeah. outlook on it. Like, I saw it in theater. I was there with Kamran. I saw it in theaters. I didn't hate it entirely, but I definitely wasn't happy when I walked out. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, it's just, again, I felt like the best approach was to just let him work on it at his pace. And it would have been that grand epic. But that We're corporate, getting it now. Huh? We're, We're getting it now. The thing is, you're just throwing more scenes into a film that was already made that a lot of people don't like already, you know? Well, actually, Justice, Justice League was completely – Josh Whedon completely remade Justice League. Well, they Justice kept League. some footage, didn't they? And he just rewrote parts of the script? Yeah. Like, That's what it was. Are like footage. our Snyder footage. Well, either way, it's still like a hodgepodge of different people getting involved. Right. You know? yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I know it's a big rant. Again, it's just – I'm I'm just like, just release the damn oh, thing. Nothing Let me. nothing on what's coming up for me. I know. I but know. I go again. Come on. Like I said, just just release the damn thing. Let me watch it. I'll shut up until then. I'll I'll give an honest opinion when it comes out. I just think at this point he should have just made like an epic TV show. That's all. For how long it is, it's really hard to commit to like a four and a half hour movie, four hour movie. Well, no, it's honestly. not a. It's not. It's a, it's a mini series. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but it it was a film well, originally. We have a break. Yeah, I want but, to be a TV again, show. Hey, it's releasing in episodes. So, oh yeah, but you know. It should be- well, you know what I mean? It's meant to be a, it's a film that's being broken up into episodes now or parts. Yeah. So it kind of the the pacing gets a little weird when you do that. Sure. Yeah. So that's that's my concern. And again, I'm like if you're going to make it this long, just commit. Make the damn thing like 10 hours, 10 episodes at this point, you know? 10 hours. Just cram it all in there at this like if that's what you want to do. Anyways, I'm going to keep going. Whoever's next, just go. Who wants to go next? <laughs> okay. Uh, all okay. right. Um Oh, you can go. So I'll say this. If you're going to hire Zack Snyder, you should know what you're getting into at this point. True. You know what type of director he is. You know you know what he wants to do. It's, it seems like every single movie, he wanted to do three hours. And then they're like, no, you got to cut it down. And they take it out. And they do this piss poor job of taking it out. And then it ends up being, you know, this hot mess. And... Um, as far as like the Snyder Cut goes, I'm excited for it because it's his vision fully and you, you're going to get it. You're going to get exactly what he wanted to put out. Do I agree with everything about his vision? No, me personally, I don't. I think uh, things get a little too dark, like tonally and like... Um, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. You know, in the... Uh, it, 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 you know, um, and I just... I, he's not a good writer. <laughs> He's like, all right. Okay, I don't blame Zack Snyder for so that. Sad. That is Chris Taro, and that's David Gordon. This is the most shit no, writers they got too. on that's his movies. Too. That's him too. Yeah. Stories are not his, uh, his his best thing. Like you know, directing. He's you know he's a phenomenal director. He he puts so much detail in in it in every single frame. Um, you know, he does a good job with that. But as far as, like, him, you know, writing and doing the stories, it's like, ah, oh, man, I, I, I can't I can't really agree. I mean, I liked a few of his films. I liked his version of Superman. Um, I think mainly because you actually got to see Superman fight in live action, you know, instead yeah. of, you know, the other movies that was just like, you know, they weren't ready for that anyway, but still. Um yeah, Snyder Cut, I mean, you know, good for him that, and good for the fans that really wanted it. A lot of people really kept pushing for it, and it finally, you know, it happened. 
you know, right. WB so saw, smart. hey, we could make money off of this, and they decided to go for it. Um, you know, it just it, it, it looks cool. I mean, you get more um, character development for the Flash and Cyborg, and I really don't see nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Honestly, <laughs> and when it gets here next year. Finally, um, <laughs> a whole year, <laughs> yeah. all year, um, we'll be able to see, you know, his his whole vision of it. Because um, I remember Batman v Superman seeing that in theaters, and I was like, oh, okay, it was a, it was an okay movie. And then I saw the Snyder cut of that movie, which was like three hours, and I was like, this is a much better film. Like this actually makes sense. Like the editing was a lot better. The story actually made sense. It was just like. You know, if you're gonna hire this man, just know what you're getting into, and just let him let him do what he's gonna do. Like okay. Josh Whedon, he as great as Josh Whedon was for the Avengers, he he messed Ooh. up. Well, yeah, it became a mess. He just... up. he he turned Batman into Iron Man, and that didn't make sense. Um, you know, he you know put these, you know. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't say like sexist, but like, you know, just kind of like there's dumb scenes in there that even, you know, Gal Gadot didn't even want to shoot. And it's just like, well, you know, and you can tell which which parts of the movie are him. That's another thing, too, that made it so jarring is you can tell when it's Joss Whedon and when it's Zack Snyder. It felt like Age of Ultron. What? No, it felt like Age of Ultron, like the way they would do like the weird like banter between them when they were all angry at each other yeah and then since some of it worked for me the, the 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 you know just a little banter that everybody had but it was just like man i really wanted more you know more cyborg more of the flash like you know like let these people talk you know and um they just kind of you know just put a bunch of scenes together and that horrible 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 superman face <laughs> do you believe my god oh man uh, my and, then, and then you, then you read the script right there we didn't put in the line do you bleed apparently Zack Snyder's like I didn't do that he's like <laughs> that doesn't make any sense <laughs> you look at the script and it says do you bleed and then uh and then Zack Snyder just put in uh, right under that uh turn lights off and then there you go <laughs> make it extra make it extra dark <laughs> There you go. Do you bleed? Lights off. Um, Turns nighttime. But yeah, I think uh, like Josh Whedon, like for characters like, you know, the Flash, I think that works a lot better. But for people that are like, you know, Wonder Woman, I don't see it. Uh, Batman, I definitely, Jesus Christ, don't let Josh Whedon anywhere near Batman ever again. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, well, just Jesus Christ, man. I know. That's <laughs> so bad. I mean, wow. That was that that was bad. That I wanted to bad. get Gordon Ramsay to go talk to Joss Whedon after and tell him what a terrible job he did after that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the movie again, it became a mess because it was like two people trying to like rip it apart and restructure it, you know? Yeah. Right. That's like I a perfect that, example you know. of the phrase too too many cooks in the kitchen. Spoils yeah. <laughs> nope. yeah, too many cooks in the kitchen. And then with the with the Snyder cut, it's like, all right, let's just get him back in here. But you see that dish? Just keep adding food into it. Yeah. Joseph, <laughs> Mr. Whedon, why are you putting chocolate on the chicken? It's fun. I want to make it dark. Take out um, all of Whedon's stuff. He said the only stuff you're going to see in this movie is any is the stuff that he shot. So you, it's not going to be you know a jumbled mess. It's going to be you know it's going to be his vision. You know, okay. he's to put up a shut up. He's been he's been pumping everybody up for that um that snyder cut as well too he's been feeding into it so hey, at the end of the day he better he better make a good movie because yeah. his, his uh it's his um livelihood on the line too yeah like, if it's a garbage movie then everybody's gonna be like okay well what was the point of all that <laughs> of all that hype <laughs> hey fans have already made up their fi- their minds they're gonna love it no matter yeah. what all right, James, before he rips it apart. I know. I feel uh, good. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so I kind of agree with uh, Brandon and Justin that, like, they, the studio executives or whoever, you know, destroyed this movie, 
they should have just let Zack Snyder do what he was going to do and not try to like course correct. And it's like, and especially after what happened with Zack Snyder's daughter, you know, that they should have just put it, uh, put the project on halt and yeah. like come back later when Zack Snyder had enough time to grieve. It, Cause yeah, the whole too many cooks in the kitchen thing, it, like it ended up making it a jumbled mess that just tonally was conflicting throughout the entire movie and the one thing that I am hoping for is that it, I, I hope that it is not that they are just throwing in more stuff to this movie. I'm hoping that they're putting stuff back that was cut out. Because I have a feeling that Zack Snyder, being as long-winded as he normally is, he probably came to the, uh, to the studio execs and was like, okay, I got a rough draft, but to have all the scenes that I want to have so that I hope that the fans care for these characters or these versions of these characters it's going to be like four hours long (laughs) and the executives were like okay no cut it down to like two and a half and we don't care how and i'm hoping that that's what ended up happening or at least that when joss whedon came in they were like we got all this footage cut it down to like two and a half hours and yeah and like I'm just hoping that what we are getting is going to be a version of the movie where the things that were cut out that made it not make sense are put back in. Cause yeah, like it looks like we are definitely going to get more scenes with the flash that shot of him seemingly running through the speed force. got me hyped. Cause I was like, Ooh man, that that's got some that's implications crazy. there and uh, saving Iris West, or at least I assume that was Iris. That was, Iris West. That was also yeah. really cool. Cause I was like, Oh wow. They had a, they must have had a lot more about with with Barry because like I, and it's weird because I usually like Barry Allen Flash because he's he's witty, he's funny, he's about as close to Peter Parker Spider Man as I can get in DC Universe I think, but, yeah. uh, but I did not care for this Barry Allen in this movie and I was shocked that I didn't care about him, and same with Cyborg like I was like why was Cyborg even in this movie he was he there was like. He was barely used. (laughs) And I had forgotten that there was that one shot of him like clearly at being like the star football player at his high school or whatever. I don't know what position he plays, but uh, there's definitely at least some scene where you see him before his accident, before Mm -hmm. he becomes cyborg. And it's just odd that uh, what's his name? Zack Snyder was saying that cyborg in his version of the movie was supposed to be the emotional heart to the movie and i was like i cannot see how that was possible because in the version that we got i did not care for cyborg at all he barely did anything he was basically used as a tool to hack into the mother boxes and nothing more which was sad because he's he he could do so much more but i don't know so i'm very again cautiously optimistic that we are getting a four hour movie because we will finally get those scenes that will make us care about those characters that we didn't end up caring for initially. So I'm, I'm hoping it's better. And I am at least very surprised that they even made a trailer for this movie that I absolutely hated the first time. And I, I'm actually hyped for this one. I don't know how they did it, but that trailer got me. Yeah. <laughs> So th- those are my that's my opinion anyway. It's love, right. James. In his, it's love. In, uh, let me say, in his um, defense about making a four hour, five hour, whatever Justice League movie, is also they decided to do a Justice League movie and they did not introduce any of those characters. So he kind of needed mm-hmm. a lot of time to like you know get that ball rolling too. So that too. You know. It was like. It was like three other characters that never had a movie before that. Exactly. Yeah. Like I like, said, it was a coked up Warner Brothers going, we got to catch up, just throw them all in at once, see how we go after. And it's yeah. like, I'll do what I got with what I have, I guess. Okay. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, so. Uh-oh. I would just like to say, first off, the gall on Warner Brothers to think that they were going to make a whole movie in less than six months and have it be good is unbelievable. <laughs> Whoa, wait, what? They made like with when they like remade Justice League with Joss Whedon. 
Oh, oh yeah, during the reshoots, yeah. Yeah, that they shot oh, that yeah. they could re- pretty much remake the entire movie in six months and think that it was going to be good. The gall cocaine, on dude. them. It's the cocaine. And it was ridiculous that they did that to Zack Snyder. You know, I think that they were just looking for a way to get rid of him. They saw the opportunity and they said, you know, why don't you just go? We'll finish the movie. And that was it. That being said, I know you guys were saying this is going to be his vision and everything, nobody else getting in the way, but I would like to point you to Exhibit A, (laughs) three movies made by a director with nobody else getting in the way, nobody telling him that, hey, George, I don't think that that sounds very good. And those three movies are the Star Wars prequels. Oh, God. Not one person... (laughs) told that man that hey you know those that george like jar jar's kind of racist you know (laughs) or whatever not one person told him that and that was his vision nobody getting in the way that was it and i know that i I know that you know the star wars prequels that they're technically by fans, they're, they're considered masterpieces now, you know, even though that everybody hated them a couple of years ago. I'm just saying, but, <laughs> you know, you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Just because it's somebody's pure vision doesn't mean Sad. it's going to be good. Okay. Next, Nothing. there is like. I'm not buying into the whole bullshit that, oh, Superman was supposed to come back a completely different character from the dead. Like, I don't care. Like, you can't make Superman just like Batman. And that's why they didn't work together on screen. And honestly, I thought Whedon handled Superman in the short time that he was in that Justice League movie better than Snyder did. Yeah, I definitely think that. I don't think Snyder directed Superman very well. And I could tell that Whedon did it better. Despite that horrible, disgusting mustache remover. (laughs) <laughs> that digitized upper lip you mean oh, god i feel so Tom bad for Henry Cavill. So, he just deserves so, so much better. badass that he even ruined the justice league by himself <laughs> yeah. yeah tom <laughs> just for mission hey by the way that mission impossible movie is really good it is um, it, it is, is he was good, good yeah it is, this is phenomenal yeah. i was like damn i need this when they come up man yeah and then when Dude. you watch man from uncle you're like you know what henry cavill should be a spy in some film just saying, he should right? be in that everything. bathroom fight scene was pretty badass. Yeah, and I you know, can, like, I'll, I'll say that that mustache was hot. Yo, yeah. he's Sherlock Holmes, though, dude. <laughs> he was, I see why it was it. absolutely necessary. <laughs> he is perfect casting for Superman. Like he really is. Like they got the per- the best you can get right now, other than mm-hmm. Brandon Routh, who I still feel like they did him dirty. But uh, it's so cool that they got him back to. Well, weirdly enough, he's not only the the Adam. And in, he, he's the Kingdom he's Come Superman. They brought him back yeah. as Superman. Yeah. As Kingdom Come Superman. I, I, I like that, that they so gave cool. him a second shot, and he was they did great. Him dirty in that too, actually. Uh, he, he was really good, and uh, when he came back to do Superman, yeah. So it's too bad that movie was not super good. <laughs> no, but uh, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, I just I didn't like the direction that Snyder took these characters. I thought that they rushed everything. I just I'm I don't like the lineup either. I don't think Cy- I thought Cyborg is somebody who should come in in like the second Justice League movie. Like I feel like that's where he should come in. I never thought I never saw him as a founding member. It should be Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, uh, Flash, Aquaman, and Martian Manhunter. Who Martian Han- Manhunter is apparently going to be shoehorned into this too? I would rather see these characters fleshed out, done right, in their own movies before getting them all together in the new one well supposedly like he, was, Justice League. He, he was coming Apparently that was the plan from the beginning yeah yeah for martian was, man Arthur. yeah he was in the man of steel movie yeah okay. Okay. the general guy so let me bring this up to you exhibit oh. b where the <laughs> shit was he then during the general zod invasion the the doomsday fight all this shit happened he did not do anything that's the problem they went into the, they didn't know what they were doing Zack snyder put that in at the last freaking minute in justice league because even the actor said he goes i didn't know i was playing martian manhunter until like 
the fan theories came out and Zack Snyder was just like, oh, that sounds cool. Let me put that in my Justice League movie too. There was no freaking plan at all. I'm so sick of this shit. I'm so sick of the Snyder thing. I was so happy that Justice League flopped because I was like, after that, we got Shazam, Aquaman, which, you know, those were fun movies. They weren't great. And then you got Joker. I was like, great. We're moving on. It's a new dawn. And... (laughs) Now the Snyder fan, like, listen, I have no doubt the Snyder fan fan cut is going to, or whatever it is, is going to be way better than the, what we got. It's going to be miles better. That ain't saying much, though, because that Justice League movie that we got was garbage. I just, do people forget Batman v Superman? I yeah, mean, I liked it. Oh, I, I actually know you did, Cameron. I know you did. Ultimate edition. I mean, that's oh, yeah. my my brain weirdly like wraps up Batman v Superman and the Justice League into one weirdly. Same wrap. here. Yeah, same here. I do. I'm the same way. I mean, like I said, I can go into a fine detail of those movies, but that's I'm saving that for a, a, a trick up my sleeve later on. In, in yeah, future. I'm gonna throw up things. Anyway, <laughs> I, I get it. I get moment. it. I'm happy that the Snyder fans. We'll finally have a reason to shut the hell up. Just shut up. No more of the Snyder. Like, you're getting your movie. Enjoy it. I'm happy you guys are getting it. I'm going to watch it. I know it's going to be better. And I good on Zack Snyder for being able to finish his vision. But I ask, I'm begging you all now, go away. <laughs> I, I will say, <laughs> leave some reason. DC oh, no. alone and get oh, no. some better writers in there. <laughs> Listen, Why is Snyder, no, 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 no. Snyder brother, proved brother, too brother. that he wanted to do a new that he wanted to do a Batman movie instead. Look at Batman was the best part of Batman v Superman, and they True. dropped the ball so hard on every Superman scene in that movie. True. I just find it funny that once this happens, the most vocal people that are just very loud are the uh-huh. ones that didn't want the Snyder cut and wanted to hurry up. I've heard it from multiple people so far. Just saying. Hey, man, the uh, the David Ayer cut. Oh, oh God. God! Round two, let's go, baby. Oh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Hold on. Yeah, we're gonna get. We're gonna get there. Very curious yeah. to see that. Like, I want to know what happens. Yeah, I want to see what seriously. happens. There is no <laughs> saving that movie. That was all the same film. He filmed that. Supposedly, it was just they edited it differently. <laughs> Supposedly, it there's like because... so much jo- uh, Joker stuff that they just like cut out of the movie entirely. Yeah, yeah. have you not, is, like? Have you seen that Joker? I think. It is funny to me that like Jared Leto swears that there's like an entire movie of stuff that he filmed that they just like didn't use and what they did keep in the movie they could still cut out entirely it'd be the same exact movie. I believe it. So yeah. that's what I, I wanted I wanted to happen just because I wanted to be like yo what was what happened I was oh Jared Leto was in there he's in a lot more he's actually a better character than I thought. Oh so how was the movie? Oh dude it still sucked ass but it's like you know we got it. It's pretty funny. It like, still uh, sucked ass but we got it. Like, what if they release like a mini movie that's just the Joker, but not oh the, God. Walk of Phoenix Joker, but release that on uh, Warner Max or whatever. Uh, what I love was David uh, Ayer said, like, it's all there. There's nothing to reshoot. You literally just edit it in. Like he said, there's like barely any work you need to do compared to like what you needed to do for Snyder Cut, which I thought was funny. And you know, I it's the Snyder Cut thing. I'm just. I'm just sick of hearing about it. Like I, I didn't like, like I said, I didn't like the directions they took the characters. I thought they were trying to do too much at once. I just wish it. I, I thought Snyder out of all things would flesh out this universe and not just cram everything down. I think that was a combination of him, crappy writers like Chris Taro and David S. Goyer and the studio trying to catch up to Marvel. And I think it's screwed us out of a good, like DC shared universe. And now oh, we'll get to the whole Batman thing later. Cause I have a whole nother rant about that, but I guess we should. It is. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Is. That's what makes me sad is how good it looks. <laughs> and I'll get, so, to, I'll, I'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm saving that for the end, but anybody else have anything? Last thoughts on the side. Any, side any of reactions to Danny? Uh, I'll <laughs> go. Uh, if anyone wants to go this. before me, I'll, I'll close it out. Wait, no, wait, hold on. Yeah, let's go. This, man. The, uh, the Martian Manhunter, they had one scene, just one in Manus. They were like, oh, okay, I can, I can see where, you know, it's possible. It's when um, Superman was like locked up and they were like interrogating him and he breaks his cuffs and you see everybody kind of like scurry to the back. Except for uh, the the general, except for him, he's the only one standing right in front of him. Didn't move a muscle. 
And I, I, I'll give no you that. And I will say to perfect casting for Martian Manhunter. That guy's a good actor. He is. So. All right. Uh, I will say this before we jump on to the next topic. Um, well, one, uh, you can actually go into Brandon's tweet history and find out he says he hates Snack Snyder as a person. He hates him. Just find it and wow. just cancel Brandon. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yes, because I've totally tweeted <laughs> the word, the name Zack Snyder in my entire history of all my tweets. There's just like yeah. two years worth of just like every day. But no, um, I, I do want to say like, given the fact that I really do think it was Warner Brothers that uh, came in and said, we want this done in this order. And he just did what he ha- could with the cards he was dealt with. He just had limited resources and he made the best of the situation that he could. That said, with every decision he made, I don't agree with all of them. I, even as a Snyder Cut man, like going crazy for it, I, I can easily say there are some things in each film I would probably be like, well, you could do this instead or something. But I still love his takes on Superman and everything else. I love the directions he went into because it was so different. But um, I know that's not what this is about, but I just wanted to, wanted to say that. And, um, you know, once this is done, Danny, I'll, I'll just make sure I'll just be in your ear whispering, be like, Snyder cuts. And it'll just be, it'll always be there to haunt I'll, you. I'll be waking up in the middle of the night screaming. Yeah, you're gonna once in a while, you just hear. I'll be like a spirit, (laughs) like a a friendly ghost. And uh, I don't know. Anyways, moving on. (laughs) (laughs) The Suicide Squad looks really good. I'm excited. Yeah. No complaints. Yeah, Yeah. I like that we're getting a bunch of reject superheroes. Yeah, like exactly. most of the characters, I had no idea who they were. I don't I'm like, even good. Know. We're Weasel, not going to care because like, like half of them are going to die anyway. Yeah, they, they can't kill man. Weasel though. He's Weasel. I thought, um, I thought, what man? What's his name? Idris Elba. I thought he was going to play the vigilante, um, that character. But that, they said mm. Bloodsport. I was like, I have no idea who Bloodsport even dude. is. I've never yeah. even seen this dude. Oh, at, so many characters saying that he was no gonna, at first they were saying he was going to replace Will Smith as Deadshot, but then I think they decided they to put him in. Yeah. yeah. Just in case they want, you know, Will Smith to come back. Which, Will you know, Smith they ended up him. saying he wants to come back and play him again. So what's, uh, Is there a reason ask, why he'd actually want to come back? Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was good in the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. he was just a, he, he just I didn't see him as Deadshot just because he was missing the mustache. If he gets the mustache, <laughs> I'm in. But no mustache, no deal. I just can't do it. It's just I I saw Will Smith just being Will Smith, but I'm okay with that. I thought it was Will weird. He's a cool dude. I like they him. The, them. They gave him the Deadshot like helmet mask thing, and then he just never wore it. Yeah, so I think they're like, well, how will people know that Will Smith is in our movie? see Will Smith on the screen. It's a movie. They do that for that. every every character that has to wear a mask. Literally every single one. I Captain know. America always has to take off that helmet. I you think Spider Man should. Right, you think yeah. Spider Man would have his mask on in front of people? That's crazy. Dude, that right. that pissed me off in Spider in Amazing Spider Man one. Like he kept taking his helmet, his thinking. mask off in places where people would know him, like his own high school. Right. <laughs> Anytime I mentioned oh, him, <laughs> Iron Man kept having the helmet, you know, fold back and everything. Yeah. And, and then yeah. you see him Spectres. inside the helmet. Right, and then yeah. Thor never wore his helmet like one time. In the yeah. first movie, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. He had and a then, gladiator and helmet. Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok, he had it on yeah. for like a second. That's a very yeah, good point. Uh, I never really noticed style. that that they they keep finding reasons to like not have people wear the helmets because it's yeah. come down. Imagine Batman just being like, <laughs> it's come down to like <laughs> a lot do. of people don't really care about this whole secret identity thing anymore. Yeah, I noticed that. Sure. It's not a big yeah. deal. Yeah, anymore. Marvel wasn't big on um, secret identities, which you know. It's it's interesting to have that you know be a thing, secret identities, and it's also interesting for these people to try to live their lives as you know these superheroes. Just yeah. shoot on me again, dude! Like, just get it over with. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Um, let me just say, I think it, I thought it was funny that Comrade somehow still managed to get Spider Man into this talk. I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah. It turned uh, my Spider-Man it came, it came out too. My, it's, it's, uh, this is payback for me going on that that horrible rant about the Snyder Cut. I was, I, I said know, I was right. gonna be long, and I was like the shortest guy. I know, I know. I destroyed yeah. the, the well, flow. Uh, 
back to the Suicide Squad. Um, oh yeah, that's right. That's oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, I like <laughs> oh, that the costumes. That I like the costumes are all just like straight out of the comics. They're not Peacemaker. Yeah, Peacemaker's costume is so good. Because you know, I thought like, okay, you're gonna hire John Cena. He's gonna be the Peacemaker. I thought they were gonna make him look cool. And then you see his 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 outfit, and I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah, this is a James Gunn movie. Yeah. <laughs> His helmet was so like <laughs> low budget or whatever. <laughs> like I don't even know how to fantastic. describe it. Yeah. I feel like okay. it's just he's gonna fly somewhere and you just see the the string that's just holding him and you're like, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. My only yeah, but my only thing is did the... Oh sorry, go ahead, Justin. Uh, uh just that you know, it's James Gunn. He's gonna have a lot of fun with it and oh, yeah. I think the Suicide Squad is a good fit for him, you know, as far as like any property that he could touch, you know. And I heard that um, he um, he had his choice of what he wanted to do, and he picked that. So, you know, he 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 got a bunch of characters. He got to get a bunch of oddball characters that people again that none of us really knew or even heard of. So that when he murders them in horrible, horrible ways, we really won't care. Yeah. And Harley, can we just talk about how much they stepped the game up with Harley Quinn's suit? Oh, finally. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that one made no sense. Yeah. So like, good. I'm, I hate needlessly sexualized uh, female superhero or comic book character costumes, and they so I, got it right in this one. I hate that scene yeah. in the first one where they're like, getting ready at the military base and her suiting up is like, I'm going to put a tiny shirt on that barely covers anything. Yeah. Right. It's watching. It's, what? The, it's yeah. you know, it's to get people to watch the movie. Uh-huh. 13 year old. It's true. Boys. It got Brandon to watch the movie. I dude, I, I watched that movie cause someone forcedly made me borrow it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you still sure. have it. I think you bought it off of them. I think you secretly just watch it at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 3 a.m. It's like Patrick from SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh boy. 3 a.m. <laughs> No one will know. Suicide Dude, squad. You caught me, Comron. Oh no. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah, I'm excited for it. I think the yeah. costumes are look like a lot of fun. We know King Shark's gonna be in it. I'm excited yes, for that now. Is. I feel like this is gonna be a lot like the Harley Quinn cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And like yeah. I think the thing is, and I might be getting ahead of myself, but like Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman, those are movies we don't have to really worry about because we know like in the back of our head they're at the very least gonna be fun to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're in good hands. Well, uh, I mean, that Wonder Woman, I don't know. I'm a little nervous now. All right, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. good on you, you Justin. Just into that it. brings us to our next thing, which was Cheetah got revealed. Yeah. Lord have mercy. In yes. the last episode, I did say that was like the one thing I was looking forward to for the Wonder Woman panels. I hoped yeah. that they sh- finally showed what Cheetah looked like. I mean, it was yeah. kind of in the dark the whole time, but we yeah, got, she- got it. <laughs> She looks like she just fades into the wall. Like yeah, she, the CG is really bad. Yeah, you know, I'm not convinced on it. But I said maybe they're gonna edit it. You know, I was hopefully. I was hoping that they would actually do makeup for like the up close shots, but we're past that time, I guess, in movie making. No, it depends on the director, and it depends on, um, I guess, how much money. Yeah, you know, that's you something think- I will give. Suicide Squad, the first movie. Killer Croc looks great. Yeah. yeah. The, I mean, oh, yeah. It, people made fun of it for getting an Oscar for best makeup, but it they did a fantastic job with it. I was just yeah, mad because cool. it was going up against uh, Star Trek Beyond. And Star Trek yeah. Beyond, I thought, had way better makeup effects <laughs> in that movie. But it did deserve that nomination just for Killer Croc, though, I think. And also Diablo. Yeah, I mean, Diablo is still one of my favorite characters in that movie. Yeah, if not my Diablo favorite. just. I wish they kept him alive and brought him into the, this movie. That would have been perfect. Yeah. I wish that we had more scenes. Yeah, it was, I know. It was actually the good part, and you're like, oh, like, hey, he's oh, he's dead. Right, that, that bar scene where they actually was all sitting and talking. I was like, oh, okay, there's there's that was a good something part. here. I love that they show that he has the power to literally like incinerate people instantly, but he's right. like at the point in his life where he's a pacifist, he's just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I don't care if you put me on this team. I'm just not going to do it. You can literally I, burn the entire world if you wanted to. Yeah. I Can love I that part where Rick Flag smashes a controller and he lets him go. He goes, you're free to go. And they all stay except for Captain Boomerang. He just gets up Grabs and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He bounces. 
I was like, I, that was funny. That was a good. That was a good scene. Yeah. I Can just, you answer me why Rick Flag ate that one chicken drumstick in that one scene? I don't even remember. He even I don't ate remember him. that. There's like one scene. It drives me insane. There, where he's like, I think it's when uh, uh, the the witch. What's her name? The witch. Enchantress. Enchantress. Oh, Enchantress. Oh, yeah. When Enchantress like goes to go free her brother's soul or whatever rick flag is just like stares outside the window and just picks up a chicken wing and just takes a huge bite out of it and it's the only time in that movie where he does that and, I was like, and i'm just like is that a part of his character he was that I just uh, don't regaining know? his health bar i'm so confused <laughs> <laughs> that there's so many things in that movie oh, yeah, you might find out yeah. in the in the a or cut you know oh uh, yeah mm. Dude, there was a deleted <laughs> scene where they would stop by kfc i, I just want to oh, i just want to say real fast before we continue with wonder woman um I do like, like, this is how we know, like, we were going to enjoy Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad, more than the previous one was, you look at James Gunn's uh, influence in this one, was actually Ostrander's yeah. run, was actually Dirty Dozen, whereas the other one, the first one, it's like the whole thing, even with an air cut, it doesn't make sense, because you're like, what What the hell, why are they even in this situation in the first place? It looks like and they why just skimmed the comic covers, and there was like, that's who's popular. Yeah, also, so that's why that's why the Suicide Squad just looks like a better run of like at least a tribute to Ostrander's work. Yeah. Also, um, might be a spoiler, but some people were like looking at the footage that they show, the, the behind the scenes footage, and they was like, okay, they think the main villain of the Suicide Squad movie is Starro. Oh yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that also, would be so some fun. weird James Gunn stuff. But that's that's cool. We're getting to Slither wild. territory, baby. If y'all yeah. want, go watch Slither, guys. I'm just saying, whoever's watching this, go watch that's the a, movie. Oh, yeah. That's that a good, a, a good freaking movie, man. A creepy movie too, because yeah. Jesus Christ. You want to see more? Uh, you want to see more uh, Michael Rooker? Uh, he's he's in every movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, he's yeah, there. He's, in, he's there. He Slither is all on his own. So. It was, was nasty. But <laughs> oh, I know. But back to Wonder was, Woman. Yeah, I couldn't. That's Cheetah looks meh. I mean, Pretty that's really all I, The movie looks I, good I though. Know. I like the direction. Yeah, my assessment of Cheetah is just that, like, well, she looks better than cats. <laughs> good point. He's going back to that. I'm I'm holding judgment until I actually see her in daytime because I was like, that's not seeing her in the dark. There, I don't give it enough that i that can too. cast any judgment i don't see it like that so like I, i've rewatched the trailer a few times and i still don't feel like i've gotten a good look at her and yeah. she's like full-on in the middle of the screen i don't know it's probably with I, the marketing team though i'm glad they're hiding her yeah and I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see like we usually like i said before like she gets renditions where it's just like a cheetah head whereas now it's like more humanoid she actually has human hair yeah. and that's rarely done uh at least in like the previous versions we've seen at least in comics and everything else but you know that and then we still we get more riding the lightning i just want to see the lightning oh, like yeah, that, that that's where so it shows awesome. you're like fun fun yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a good time so i'm gonna let brandon have the floor on this one uh just general jim lee shit talking <laughs> i'm over it <laughs> because <laughs> and that's it <laughs> no, I'm like, why does DC like? I feel like I'm just burning a major bridge right now by saying this. But Jim like, Lee is like Jim Lee and Batman are these two things that I'm just like. There's more everywhere. to it than that. There's, I will say this: there's better artists than Jim Lee. You say that every episode, Brandon. Yep, I I make <laughs> you say it very every clear. episode. You're just You'll like, I'm gonna say you. this. I'm gonna say it. Because I'm sick of it, dude. DC treats Jim Lee like he's the only guy that draws there. Like, because realistically. Jim Lee is DC. <laughs> yeah, and like, I'm all like, of it. dude, you got the money. Like, get out of the camera. Let other people draw, homie. Like, yeah, no, Alex I feel like Ross. Yeah, like, yeah, Alex Ross is way better. Show him off more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, God. And like, Jim Lee will draw stuff. Like, he's not bad. It's just. I can tell you, like, right now, like, Mitch Gerard's, Alex Ross, uh, Steven, how do you say his name? Cedric or? Cedric. Yeah, like, those three guys are amazing. I mean, they kill it when they draw for DC. Why has it always got to be Jim Lee? Yeah, and it's just Dustin like he's in, and Dustin Nguyen, yeah, him too. And, like, it's just like, why? Why does he always have to be there? You know, like, it's just, I don't get it. 
I mean, I get it. He's like one of the only artists that people know, but it's like, we get it, dude. Like, you're big. Just let someone else draw for once. And like, I just keep thinking that because he just keeps showing up, you know? He draw yeah. all. He drew all the most important covers for DC. And that's all he is. He's a cover artist. Because his covers aren't even that good anymore. To be yeah, honest. his Action Comics 1000 is not good. His, his Batman, detective. The, yeah, that was not good. Yeah, and Jim Lee can't draw motion. Like, say what you will. He could do some decent statues or whatever, but the moment the action kicks in, that dude cannot do it well, at least now. Yeah, they're and very refined faces. Very stiff. Yeah. And I don't say that in a bad way. I'm just saying certain artists have strengths and weaknesses, and his is when they're very stiff. Again, not a bad thing. But I just think you can't make them draw everything. And, it's, you know, it's just like that's what they do, or he puts himself through that. And it's just like, Jim Lee, why are you at all these panels on, on fandom? Like, you're going to tell this guy his art's trash, and then you're going to show up that, like, for the, all his other announcements for Batman and all that? It's like, dude, like, you drew Hush, and that's, like, the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. He was in the Milestone panel. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't think he had anything to do with that. I think he's just like, look what I greenlit. Yeah, so, I don't know. Just too much Jim Lee. Just make it stop. Like, that's all I got to say. I'm... I'm I'm done. I Anybody wonder how else? many. In, when we get Fandom Part Two, which is like five times as big because this was only one of six sections that we saw, how many more will actually have Jim Lee in them? How all do you think them. he's hi, do you think he's hiding in all of them? Like, how do you think it's gonna he's gonna pop out? But it's just that's why I feel like all these big ones he wanted to just throw himself in as many as possible. Which I'm hoping like when we get to the others, we'll have like. Hey, look! It's that other artist we have, and he's doing like a "Hey, I'm a dr- I'm drawing this character. Watch me draw it." And I'm like, you think oh, he's this- trying to justify his job right now? I do- That's why I'm like, whose decision was this? Was this him? Did he have full control to actually do this? And he straight up said, "I want to be in everything because my ego's just become that massive." Or was it actually like execs going, "You're the face now. We want everyone to see you." And it's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, I'm tired of this face a little bit. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. Well, before we get to the thing that we all really want to talk to, I figured we should talk about the Flashpoint movie or Flash real quick. Um, I, mean, I hope I'm, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested. You know, you have Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton, um, which shows that, um, you know, Barry's going to be running all over the place. Right. So, hey, and- um, I just hope it's a good story at the end of the day. Yeah. I hope that if this is going to be Ben Affleck's last Batman movie and he isn't back for good, I hope that this is the opportunity for him to go out gracefully because he was a great Batman. And I think that he, for the effort that he put in to everything, Ben Affleck does deserve to go out in a nice, in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a good Bruce Wayne and a good Batman. Yeah, he was. I openly say he's probably the best Batman easily. Yeah. I think that he really got screwed out of, some potential greatness yeah. I, I i'm hoping i know you might disagree with me just because it gets into more of the snyder verse of it's still here but i'm just like what if it does well enough and this is like this end uh i believe the this comes after the snyder cut so like snyder cut versus popularity and then you have this come after and at the end you're thinking like kind of like it, it, what if it was flashpoint he comes back and you're like, oh, it's a new actor playing Bruce Wayne. And he's like, hey. And Flash is like, oh, this is weird. But all right, I guess this is what we're doing now. It, he comes mm-hmm. back and it's like Inception where you're like, is it real? Is it, is it not? He gets to his kids, but it's, it's Ben Affleck and he's still there. And he's like, I'm here to stay. And you're just like, oh, my God. That would be, <laughs> that would be, I would lose my, you would just see my soul leave my body. And I would just be a corpse in the theater. It would just be, I finished. I'm done. Yeah. It would be great. Well, is that it, you guys? Michael, uh, I'm, I don't know. Cautious, again, cautiously optimistic. I, I like The Flash. I think he's a fun character. This, I mean, granted, specifically Barry Allen. I don't know that much about the other Flashes, um, although there are a few. <laughs> uh, I like that they showed off that he's got a new suit that's more streamlined. It looks I, so I much better. I think it's really interesting that it is uh, designed by Bruce Wayne this time. And Michael Keaton's Batman is in the background. And, and that's the other thing is that like we they I didn't even notice at first like people pointed it out later that that Batman in the uh, the 
concept art that they put up of the Flash wearing the new suit. That looks like the Michael Keaton Batman. Yeah, it's got the yellow symbol and everything. Yeah. So I that for whatever reason, maybe it's just nostalgia member berries, but like that made me go like, oh man, not only are we gonna actually get a Flashpoint movie where Flash like that, which I guess would mean that there has to be a reverse Flash in this movie, which we haven't Ooh, even seen yet. That'll be like, good. I I am. It could be really interesting because I thought Flashpoint was such an interesting like story in dc and i would love to see it i just want to see it done right and it's just i don't know if it's going to have the same impact as it did in the comics where it was like literally years and years leading up to barry finally deciding like well what if i do go back and and try to fix this and it ends up like destroying everything like everything is completely different it's a it's such an interesting story i'd love it if uh michael keaton uh, ends up being um, uh, Thomas Bimbers. Wayne. Is that, oh, I just, oh, Flashpoint Batman, yeah. Yeah, like I think that would be so interesting. Uh, but again, we'll see if it being kind of initially tied to the Snyder, uh, to the Justice League movie and that movie not going right. Like, I don't know. We'll see what we get. Well, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be good. I'm really hoping that Michael Keaton opens up the door to a Batman Beyond movie. Oh, yeah. With yeah. Keaton as old oh. man Bruce. Oh, I would yeah. love that. Yeah. 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 And, this definitely seems like the multiverse. Door oh, yeah. They're going hard on the multiverse, yeah. which I'm fine with. And what I was really hoping, this is going to segue into what we all really want to talk about, uh, which will be the final thing. And I was hoping that Flashpoint was going to reset the timeline or kind of reset the universe. And this would be the opportunity for Ben Affleck to pass on the baton to Robert Pattinson. And he would be the new DCEU Batman because that trailer looks like the Batman movie that I have always, always wanted. And it makes me so depressed that, <laughs> That, that this is going to be in its own universe because just seeing Batman stand next to Gordon at the crime scene, I'm just like, they did it. Yep. It looks perfect. And Matt Reeves made it very apparent that this is its own thing where he's developing his own world and that's it. Yep. I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah. Le- uh, okay, so... Batflick. I'll say this. Let's uh about the uh, the trailer. Let's all remember. <laughs> only twenty five percent of the movie has been shot. Yeah. So and take it all, it all with a grain of salt. And it all looks a lot so of good that already. stuff you probably won't even see in the movie. It's a very yeah. shiny quarter, though. Yes, <laughs> it, is. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it is. really it is. is. It was awesome. It was a great, great music. Um, it oh was, was cut very well. Um. They they did a version of the Riddler that feels closer to Hush as well too. You're right. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. about that. Well, they you know, with the weird stuff he had all over uh, you know his face. It seems yeah. like he was they, duct taping himself. Does anybody care about spoilers for the animated films? No. Nah. Go for it. Right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so, Riddler's Hush in the animated version awesome. of Hush. I know, and I hate it. Wait, yeah. they changed the. Is it's that why not, you said it's not good? Yeah, they. I'm. I'm all for like changing things, but that was just a bad idea entirely. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, it yeah. I was that really just ruins weird. my. That's weird because all right, real fast. Uh, that's very different. Besides the court of owls, honestly, for I don't know. It, I think it's because it's like the whole weird, deranged childhood best friend thing. But Hush is actually my favorite. Uh, Batman villain. Well, too bad it's Riddler in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. I I do like though that like this is a definitely a in Matt Reeves' world like this is a perfect world for like all the weird the, like the different for a hush these, movie. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, oh my uh, god, give that to me later on in the trailer, like, like the trilogy, yeah, like a third one or something. Like, it looks like you might get it because yeah, yeah, <laughs> the Riddler looks a little like us in I, this one. I wasn't into the bat suit either, but seeing him moving it on screen, it looks like the, it looks very Dracula like, and I love it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I, yeah. there is rumors too that we're going to see him in a second bat suit, and it's going to be the classic 
blue ears, long horn, oval Ooh. bat suit at the end, okay. like towards the end. That'd be because he's still building his his suit. And I'm just like, if they went for it and did like that Neil Adams suit on the screen, just I'll be like, what's Comron with the Snyder cut? I'll be like, that's it. It's, I can die I'll happy be, now. I'll still be on your shoulders, like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I know you will. Be. Either way. <laughs> In yeah. these darker, I mean, like every Batman movie that they're making are dark, darker movies. So it makes sense to put him in black or dark grays. I don't see the, uh, I just don't see the reason to put him in blue. I, the blue underwear like, and purple gloves. <laughs> like yeah. the Arkham, like the Arkham City, they had him like he was blue, but like only when the light hit him. So mm. I like that about that, that game design. Yeah, he had like. And when he's in the dark, it's all black. But then, like when the light hits him, it has like a blue sheen to it, almost like a dark, dark purple. Mm, okay. That's yeah. So if they did that. I think it would look cool. And it's just it's depressing though, because I'm just like, that's the perfect Batman to meet like a young Superman, to me. Well, they don't have a young Superman. <laughs> right. Can you imagine Superman in that world? <laughs> I know, but like well, the, the yeah, contrast. Sure. If they did Superman right, like he's the Boy Scout who grew up on a farm. Him meeting that dark pissed off young batman when they're both like like cavill if they did cavill right and they had those two meet a good writer that's like that'd be a gold mine of having their two different worlds collide i still don't want this guy to be the batman though i like this version of batman as far as like okay this is a different take of batman yeah it looks cool it looks awesome i can't wait to see it but um, I am more leaning towards Ben Affleck's just bigger dude that literally beats the crap out of people every single night for 20 years. And I, I, I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's so why they're like, leaning into this whole multiverse thing. Yeah. You yeah, also exactly. all noticed the... Um, I didn't notice until at, like after we recorded last time, but in the trailer, there's uh, the little card. I, there's rumors. I, I Brandon, I feel like you probably saw it, but... The Quarter card Owls. on the front has the owl, yeah. Yeah, Quarter Owls, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, potentially leaking. I don't know if it would even be in this movie or at the end or something, but it's like that would be an interesting concept. It's supposed to be like a trilogy, so that would be interesting yeah. if, you know, Batman goes against the Riddler in this movie and then he goes against, you know, somebody else in the second one. And then the third, it's kind of like a specter thing to where it's like it's the Court of Owls and they've been doing, they've been behind everything this whole time. Right. And that's Could the perfect, be. like, detective, vil- like, solving the cr- this type of crime yeah. of like that's so good especially and like we never get detective stuff this is I, just as an example real fast like i actually like my mom used to love like the adam west stuff growing up and everything else mm-hmm. i actually got to talk to her and show her this trailer and she was like batman's a detective yeah. and i was like Bro. oh my god it's you know <laughs> like the mainstream ma- the average person just knows him as a crime fighter. They don't realize he's probably like, yeah, it's the world's the, greatest detective. detective. And, and I'm so like happy you brought that up, Comron, because I was I had the same experience with a couple other friends too that were just like, well, I didn't know he was a detective. And that's the thing. It made me realize we've never gotten a Batman movie that does Batman 100% justice. No, maybe True. animated. But yeah. Like, and this is a comic guy's dream, dude. Like, right. And you know. All the best Batman stories, with the exception of No Man's Land and Nightfall, they're all detectives. They're film noir movies on the page with costume crime fighters. That's what they are. They're not really that all... Like, a lot of them aren't even all that action-heavy. They're more story-based. And I think that this movie might kind of be a flop among a lot of casual people because of that. Because if they're going to go for it and do what they said they're going to do, which is film noir, detective Batman... I think a lot it's a lot of people aren't going to like it, but I'm a hundred percent down for that. I've been waiting for it, and that's why I say like I think that this this looks like the Batman that should have been in the DCEU, Detective Batman. Like Ben Affleck, I think he was great. I think he got dealt a bad hand, but it was just all blowing shit up and killing people. Left Hell and right. yeah! And it's <laughs> like that. The Nolan movies, everywhere. <laughs> even the Nolan Batman movies, they're great movies, but they're to me, those are superhero movies for the casual fan. That was the only way you were going to break those movie, that universe down and make it digestible for the non-superhero fan. You know? Uh, just, just, just if you're going to do a detective thing, then fine. You know, yeah, it makes sense because everybody's comparing it to Seven, which, you know, 
also fits into what DC's doing. Like Joker was like, you know, taxi driver and um, mm-hmm. such. Um, just, just give me one scene where Batman is just beating up a room full of people. Oh, there will be. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's gonna do look that. what he oh, did yeah. to that guy who just asked him who he was. He's he already in a coma. Yeah. He didn't I stop when he was on the ground. He just kept going. I know. I was just like, oh, he's down on the ground. Then it was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't yeah. even want to see no, that guy. That he's was... just making sure. He's just making sure. Yeah. So you know what that was? That was Robert Pattinson. That wasn't even Batman anymore. And I was like, you said Twilight? Did you yeah, see Twilight? He's got something to prove. <laughs> Just kept be. I said, "Cut, Rob, stop." <laughs> he reminds me of. Uh, he reminds me of Keaton too, with the way he talks. Just saying that I'm yeah. vengeance. It's a that lot. Very Keaton like. So good. Oh my god. I'm gonna. I'm gonna create a shirt that's just gonna have like Team Jacob on it. And then it's <laughs> gonna say. The it's gonna say like Team Jacob on it, and I'm gonna cross that out and on the back. It's gonna be like the red string, and it's gonna be like Jacob was a vampire. Vampires bats. Bats, <laughs> bat, he's a man, Batman. <laughs> Twilight came out the same year as Dark Knight, or one of them did. And it's just going to be all these crazy theories stringed together, yeah. and it's just going to lead to Batman in the center. But I, I just, I just wanted to say to you guys, just imagine this Batman with Henry Cavill Superman. Like, they meet on the screen together. This, the contrast, oh, cool. the contrasting worlds... I think could be such a good dynamic if you got a good writer to do it. I think you got to make him. Can't Superman. see it. I don't know why. I, can't see I don't know. You got. You got to do Superman go all out and make him the boy, the naive Boy Scout who grew up on a farm, and then he just meets this Batman who just puts people into a coma for asking who they are. And he's I think just you like, need a you need a younger younger actor. I feel like for that one. I feel like I Cavill know. and Pat Pattinson could fit they in had well to together. Tr- they they had a scene in uh, Man of Steel where he Henry I think they used Henry Cavill for like I think he was still supposed to be a teen. The, oh, the when scene he's where before the tornado he part, before the tornado, and there's like he was in the car and he let his father die. Yeah, don't <laughs> you let me do anything, Dad? He's got big curly hair and everything. Right, and that's I like, hate you, Dad. A teenager, but yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I because Pattinson's not that young, so I feel like you could still do it. And yeah, he's in his thirties. Yeah, so I, I was just hoping that Flashpoint would, they would pass a baton on from like, like I said, Ben Affleck to Robert Pattinson. He would be the new DCEU Batman, and we could get Detective Batman. But I just think how bad the universe building was for DC. Right. I'm okay with just doing one stories like Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Do three movies with Pattinson, move on. Do a Joker movie, move on. Aquaman and you know, do three movies with Jason Momoa and then move yeah, on. Three movies. Let's go. Yeah. Three movies. You know everyone I'm gets everyone gets trilogies. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still just Yeah, hey, we can talk about Black Adam. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, there was, there was cool. like I'm there excited. was like one little snip. It was like a step above Flash. How much they showed? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, God, yeah. what was the other movie that they showed too? Uh, where they talked about um, Shazam? Oh, uh, Aqu- oh, okay. Yeah, Shazam got a title. Aquaman two was just like they're like Ocean Masters coming back, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. it was like, and that's part of your tr- your three movie trilogy right there. <laughs> yeah, they're like back to Batman. Yeah. Pretty much. Back, yeah. to Batman. Back to Batman and Jim Lee. Oh, man. But yeah, yeah. Um, year two Batman. This is a good, that's what Robert Pattinson is. It's year two Batman. Yeah. It, it, uh, it looks good. Yeah. They're it, it using, like, this is uh, supposed to be Long Halloween Batman. They're basing yeah. it off of Long Halloween. And Colin like, Farrell, man. I didn't even know that was him. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's the penguin. Uh, didn't even they, look like a guy in makeup. If they give him that Arkham City like end of a beer bottle shoved into his eye instead of the monocle, <laughs> I'll be like, "That's that's it." Like, make Penguin a mob boss. And club. It looks like he's you know a gangster in this one that you know he's he's working his way up. And yeah, yeah, it's still early on too. I like that that this is like everybody's just kind of starting out, but it's not an origin story. 
Right. And can we talk about uh, Jeffrey Wright as Gordon? Because oh my God, that voice! That's is... Gordon. I looked at Jeffrey him. I was Wright? like, Yeah, yeah. That was that's it's, it's, it's. I mean, that's just it. It's just Jeffrey Wright. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we amazing. talked about this in the the Black Representation episode over on Apollo City Comics, which when you find an actor who so embodies a character, it doesn't matter what race or anything they are. Like that's it, and they did it. Because I look at him, no dialogue, you just look at him, you could tell this guy has been beaten down, and he's sick and tired of Gotham City shit. And he's still, yeah. he's not even oh. Commissioner Gordon yet, he's still Captain Gordon. And when you when you first see it, you look at him and immediately know that it's Gordon as the character. Yeah, yeah. Like, that happened to me. I saw him and I was like, oh, there's, there's Gordon. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just yeah, want to hear his fact. voice in my head when I think, to be honest. Yeah, the fact that... Um... I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, it just looks good. They're making a, a good story. We've seen so many different types of Commissioner Gordon already. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this is his introduction and they, you know, made a change as far right. as race. It's like we've already seen, you know, multiple versions of Commissioner Gordon. And here they just decided to, you know, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. The world <laughs> is is filled with different types of people that look different. So it makes sense to... You know. Yeah. I mean, this is a major city, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Catwoman's black, Commissioner Gordon's black. and then, She looks yeah. really good, too. She looks yeah, like, man. I looked yeah, at her, too, I'm just like, that's Selena Kyle, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm just curious to see what movie. happens with her in the movie. It looks like we're going to get a good Batman-Catwoman-like relationship. Well, I wasn't sure if they're going to kind of, like, have her kind of, like, drop in and out in scenes or if she's actually going to play a major role. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if that's what it is. If she drops in and out. Yeah, I heard cause... that there's rumors that they're going to make her like the femme fatale, like in Long Halloween, and they're going to do the whole, mm. is she or isn't she the whole like uh, illegitimate daughter of Balcony? Yeah, that's mm. pretty cool, honestly. Like, I didn't uh, know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Especially, so, too. She, I think she's honestly the first Jewish Catwoman, too, which is really cool. Oh, wow. The first what? Uh, Jewish Catwoman. Huh? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's half, yeah, she's half Jewish. Oh wow, that's right. Cool. Like I'm, I looks like a great cast. I'm ready for it. It would be even better if there was oh. like a little court of owls like tease at the end, or like maybe Batman's just like he picks up a Joker card at the end. He's just like, uh, save for the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, don't need a, I totally, I totally the Joker, forgot. I hope he comes on late. Like Matt Reeves said, like they, he says tease that the Joker's in this universe, but like. Like it's a later on thing. I'm about to say the guys, the guys he's beaten up. I mean, they have like you know, you know. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the gang. Yeah. yeah this is, I hope we get. Like, I I hope Harvey Dent isn't Two Face yet either. Well, it would be interesting if like you know they have you know if you don't see the Joker, but his influence is everywhere. I love that when they do that. Like you can, you know he's out there, but you just it's like you know he's locked up. He's in Arkham Asylum, but like. He still left his mark on the city. That'll never be the same. Yeah. So I I totally forgot it was Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And I also totally forgot that Andy Serkis is playing Alfred. <laughs> I mean, you hear his voice. Austin Briggs. Yeah. yeah. Trailer, I just, man, what does it say? He says you're becoming a celebrity or whatever. I was like, oh, okay, that's Andy Serkis. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That but, Batmobile looks good too. It, oh my god, yeah. I like it that he's Very building cool. everything himself. That's what I didn't like about the Nolan movies. Like Batman's just he's in a shitty cave just putting everything together himself. So I think you know this is year two. So yeah, he's yeah. still, you know, figuring everything out. Right. You know, he's in year five, six, and seven, he'll probably, you know, have the, you know, the perfect suit, the perfect car. Yeah. That stuff. I mean, yeah, this car looks pretty cool. I mean, my favorite is is always gonna be the tumbler. Uh-huh. Just because that's like a tank rolling around, that's it's so like that's yeah, horrifying. Yeah. But um, yeah, that um, that car. Also, um, when you see the penguin, um, that little second where he's like, "Oh, this guy is crazy," I couldn't oh, help in the car. Be, yeah, and when he's in the car, I'm like, "That'd be really cool if it's a moment of Batman's just chasing him." You know, he's all crazy and happy, and they have like a Mad Max moment where he just starts crying. He starts huh? getting scared because it's like he's not stopping. There's nothing I can yeah. do. Yeah. That beat down is coming one way or another, buddy. I, I hope that they, 
that Pattinson can finally they finally get it right in this movie that Batman's not only not always just a sulking mess or like mad all the time. Like there's moments where he legit enjoys just being Batman. He looks pretty pretty sad in this movie. So I know. Yeah, he looks pretty down. <laughs> this is out. young. I this is young angry Batman. So I'm just like I get it, but I hope at some point he does like have the bat smirk. He's just like I love being Batman. Oh yeah, the animated series yeah, version. The confident just, Batman. Yeah, Affleck be- was the Affleck and Keaton were the only ones I think that that got that right. And Conroy too. The smile. Yeah, like when he says to Superman, he goes like, "Well." Here I am. <laughs> so, God, that movie could have been good. It could have been. Nah. Yeah. So, I is there anything else you guys want to talk about though before we wrap I think, things up? I think fandom as a whole. I yeah. Really. So because um, down. we uh, well, I everyone was going on on the Batman kind of like rant, and I was like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's gonna be good. I think everyone's like going to be like satisfied with what they see overall yeah uh, but i think it's i was thinking like fandom as a whole like how'd you guys feel about it i mean as far as like um you know just uh giving the fans something you know i was cool with that you know they gave you know they gave us something to look at mm-hmm. you know because uh comic-con really didn't you know do anything for anybody like nobody's really talking about it, you know. It wasn't a lot of trailers coming out, um, so you know this gave us something for you know for the people that you know you wanted to see something and get some questions answered. You know, you got to see some footage of the Suicide Squad. You find out who the who everybody is playing in the movie now. Finally, um, you got to see a Batman trailer. Um, what else? Wonder Woman. You finally got to see Cheetah, even though that was like you know, yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> the best way of describing that whole thing it is what it is um but um yeah and then you know you got to see some concept art and the fact that okay it looks a little more real now that you know the black adam movie is coming the flash movie is coming you know it's actually going to happen now you know so um yeah, you know, just get you looking forward into the future. And then, hey, if we're in some video games, too, they tossed in a couple of video games for you, which I love those trailers. I thought the trailers were really cool. They got me really interested in them. I would say um, with this and the separation to, like, oh, there's a part two now in September. Uh, one thing I did notice, like, part two is, like, five times larger in terms of content. And what they showed here was all of the biggest stuff that's going to make them the most money and they didn't want any distractions for them. They're like, you got to watch the movies. You got to watch the games. Those are going to sell. Those are going to make you all the money. And then they go, okay, the TV shows, the comics, you can pick and choose. You're not going to have the time to watch all of them probably, even in the 24-hour span. It seems like it's probably even still too much. But, you know, we don't care as much about that kind of stuff. So it was very interesting seeing how they strategically did that, if that was the plan, why they did that. I, I personally think it was, but um, otherwise I was I was very happy with what I saw. Some parts there were like, because I, I went through the whole eight hours. Uh, there were some like in between things that let me had me lose my interest. I was just like, why is this here? If it's going to be like the all-star game of stuff, there's certain parts I didn't feel like belong. Uh, which usually was like the non-movie uh, game stuff personally, but it overall, like I had, I had a great time uh, lighten up on the Jim Lee sauce. Cause that kind of ruined some taste there. Uh, but yeah, I, had a good, I, I enjoyed what I saw. Did you, did you watch it James? Yeah, I did uh, most of it. Uh, I skipped a couple panels. Uh, I skipped the Aquaman panel and I skipped the, uh, the Shazam panel because I figured I, I, there wouldn't be much news about those or the next movies. Sorry if there's some noise. My cat's going crazy. Sinbad? I can't believe you. It, oh yeah. I, that is kind of funny. Like they, someone did uh, post that like Sinbad was on the Shazam thing. And I was like, Oh man, that actually would have been kind of funny to see. But uh, uh, I forgot about Sinbad. Dude, I was I. It was well, because so like random. everyone, like isn't it a thing that we're like everyone thought that Sinbad was in some movie where he was a genie and it was called Shazam or whatever, Shazam. and he's 
Yeah. Wait, so he, it was a movie, but he was called Kazam. Yeah. It's okay. It's Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. But yeah, that one's with, with Shaquille O'Neal, but I. But yeah, a right. Movie where it's called Sinbad, starring Sinbad. Like everybody thinks he's like a genie or something like that, and it's like. Yeah, and he's like, like that never happened. <laughs> yeah, it's like a like a crack in the matrix or something like every yeah. Mandela it. effect. They call it, I think. Yeah, but he's uh, gonna be in the movie apparently. I guess I think unless he was, they just put him there to make things maybe more confusing. I have no Sinbad, idea. Sinbad, I think Sinbad's kind of underrated. I think he's funny. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He, he's in the Good Burger movie and he's awesome in it. Yeah. 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 He showed up randomly yeah. in an episode of Always Sunny as a mental ward patient. Oh what? man, no, it was a hallucination. Oh yeah, Dennis yeah. made him up. That was so Sinbad. funny. Yeah, he's he's funny in what he does, and he could, yeah. you know, he's not used enough. He could get more roles, and I think this would be great for him. You know, yeah. I want to know what he. I, like, I'm very. I want to know what he's gonna be. Like it's gonna. Yeah. Well, but I don't anyway. know. O- overall, <laughs> I I thought the events as a whole was pretty interesting. I was not expecting a whole lot out of it, but like, other than the game announcements and the movies, it is weird that. I mean, I'm not as into the comic book side of things, but you guys pointed out on Apollo City Comics that like there were like two comic announcements at yeah. a, a DC show. Hmm. So that that was that's a little odd, but I don't know. I thought it was much better done or m- more well done than I was expecting it to be, and it was a fun, interesting thing for the fans. That's like, well, you can't go to Comic Con right now. Here's something. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, well, I didn't know Sinbad was in the new Shazam, so right. Uh, that's some. Sinbad that's some. The tiger. That'd be oh, cool. he's gonna play Tawny. That's that's, uh, that's uh, pretty awesome. If, that, if that's what it is, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, this is just great news because, like I said, I haven't seen him in much lately. So give him more roles. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I, that's that's. I honestly didn't know that, but um. With the whole fandom thing, I think it's just weird timing with all the layoffs. I really do. And yeah. it's just, again, back to what I was saying in the beginning, it's just to negate the fact that we fired all these people, so here's all this awesome stuff to keep you intrigued and not mad at us. And I'll be honest, I didn't watch fandom all day. I I can't do stuff like that. Or I just, and that's for anything, like video games, movies, comics. Like I just can't sit there on my computer like watching panels because – Honestly, as much as it looked like people were enjoying themselves, a lot of people looked like they did not want to be there, and they looked very awkward. Except for the Suicide Squad one. Yeah, that one was, they had a fun time. There were so many people, and I just gave up keeping track and watching it, honestly. But, I think James Gunn, making fun of Michael Ricker, kept everybody entertained. Yeah, he seemed pretty stoked. I still but, wonder, like, what came... Do, like, what do you guys think came first? The like the plan for the layoffs or the plan for fandom i think it was a combination of the two like oh we gotta do this because we're about to try to save money here and all that that's it's usually a little the awkward world is usually pretty shitty that way yeah they probably planned it all together yeah but um really? yeah like if you look at the shazam panel like part i caught parts of it like it was like him with the child actors and it just looked very strange like very <laughs> awkward he was just there like i don't know what to say to these kids so let's just say what they tell us to say there was you know some crude I mean? stuff at the same time too it was and like, then, like the sure? whole... she's right there <laughs> and then like the will arnett stuff like it was just like oh you're talking to harley quinn and he was just like no way i will arnett and like i don't know <laughs> just like <laughs> You know, just things like that feel awkward. And then Matt Reeves was, like, so excited. But WB's like, you got two minutes to explain your whole process. And then we're showing the trailer. And then, <laughs> like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I He did, I he did a pretty – that's a, one of the few parts I did watch. He did a good job. Yeah. yeah he yeah. actually had the most time, too. He actually had 30 minutes. Well, he's he's the guy that's, like, in charge of the big premiere for them. Um so I don't know. I mean, I, I, my plan was to just wait for the trailers to come out and like the articles and, you know, I, maybe there will be more comic stuff in the next one, but I don't know. I just, I'll just wait and see. I'm just going to, I'm not going to rave about it, but I'm also not going to hate on it. Like if fandom works out and they do it every year, then so can other publishers or big companies for that kind of stuff. And maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I was kind of the same boat as Bandit and I, didn't watch 
really any of it. I caught, caught it mostly after because I just didn't feel like sitting through all of it, but I just wanted to watch trailers and everything after and read up on the recaps. Um, despite what you guys may think, I really do hope the Snyder Cut is good, and I hope it changes my mind. I, I want to like something that Zack Snyder does for once. Um, and I I think that it is good that he is getting to finish his vision. I thought that they should at least let him do that before he goes. So there's that. Um, I'm really excited for the Batman, but at the same time brokenhearted that this isn't the new DCEU Batman. And everything else just seems cool. You know, the video games, I'll wait to see more gameplay and everything. The Suicide Squad looks like a lot of fun, but you know, over that, other than that, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not overly excited for anything. Like I, like I just have to see it or whatever. Cause I don't know, just kind of over everything at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a hard time to announce stuff when people are like, yeah. you know, trying to survive. <laughs> I think a lot of that does have to do with the, the pandemic for a lot of the, a lot of it, you know, it's, there's more important things that are happening right now, but my world does revolve around superheroes because I have no life. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, you as well, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have that problem too. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, overall, I'm really just excited for the Batman. That's you know, that's the only mm-hmm. thing I'm really hyped for. So, anyways, right. guys, anything else? Um. Well, I'm going to go look more into the Shazam business because I better get a good burger <laughs> reference. <laughs> I'm just I'm going to go rewatch the Batman trailer again after yeah, right now. I gotta, so. I'm going to back to back Snyder Cut and Batman. I've been doing like each day. I've watched them at least once every day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I can't. I, I just I love it. I'm, I'm just happy. Okay, now I really mm-hmm. want a scene where like Billy and his like brother and well his whole family or whatever got a good burger and like Keenan and Kelly still there. <laughs> <laughs> They're <laughs> managers yeah. now. Yes. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they got like this the the, the well, shirt and tie. I well, no, what was gotta... he, the, he was the principal or the teacher in that movie. I forget. I think uh, he was the teacher. Finbed? He was the teacher, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my god. Oh, that was yeah. what he was, right. Yeah, then they like uh, he gets stuck to their car or something. Anyways, I don't know. <laughs> he like fucks so up. The, they fuck up his car, movie. and that's why they had to like work for the summer. To yeah, they messed the up his car. Yeah, <laughs> so, they haven't started filming yet. We should just start a movement where it's just like make put Good Burger in Shazam too. And nah, dude, dude, or, get that going. I got I got a better one, but I gotta do a quick reference. <laughs> All right, I was gonna say, let me know what it is. I'll support you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to look at like the Marvel family and see if they can make Sinbad one of them. <laughs> there you go. Well, while Brandon's looking that up, I'm going to wrap up this episode. So, uh, Comrade, you want to give a shout out to uh, Sutro Sidewalk? Yeah, Sutro Sidewalk. Yeah, you can catch it on the sidewalk. sidewalk. It's, on the, it's on the streets. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what is it called? Sutro <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Sutro Side Talk. <laughs> Sutro side talk. Okay, that's <laughs> no, it. okay. It's like basically the same thing. It's like one letter difference, <laughs> but um, or maybe it's two. I don't know. But yeah, Sutro side talk. Uh, we're a podcast where we talk about uh, gaming, TV, and movie news. Usually, select stuff as well as what we're playing and watching. Uh, you can find us on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. And we also did a crossover with Apollo City, just like we did here, uh, which is a one and two parter that you can catch part one on Apollo city and part two on us, uh, which comes out actually, or this will be, this will be out after, but yeah, it'll be out tomorrow, I guess while we're filming it. All right. Is there any place that we could uh, follow you guys at? Yeah. You can follow uh, the show on Twitter at Sutra side talk. You could follow it also on Instagram now, which won't be as active necessarily. And you could follow me as well on uh, at go, go on Twitter. All right. What about you, Justin? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at born to be Justin. Just spell it all out. All right. And James. Uh, you can find me at uh, Invader Jim one two four. At pretty much everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And last, Brandon. Oh boy. So my my new signature. What I want people to sign for is to get Sinbad into the Captain Marvel family. And we're going to vote for which character he should not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would rather uncle? watch him as Captain Marvel than Brie Larson. 
Oh, no, no I was saying... Okay, did I say Captain Marvel? No, I was going to say The Marvel Family. Sorry. Well, he was called Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, point. They were. he was there first. Yeah, he was there first. Yeah, he was. I don't know. Just make him an ongoing character now that I know he's in it. I just need him to, like... He could be, be the it. uncle. They had an uncle. Oh, well, I don't Make yeah. it work. It just, it's just make a new hashtag. <laughs> yeah, just get Sinbad to a bigger part than what they're... I know that yeah. what they're going to do with him. Could yeah. Anyways, still, I know well, Kurt in there. But uh, I was going to say, you can catch me... Uh, not just D3 Media, but you could also find me with the Apollo City Comics Podcast, anywhere podcasts are at. Or if you want to follow me on any sort of social media platform, just look up uh, Jiggity Jones. And uh, I'm usually the only one with that name. So there you go. All right. Well, we got to wrap this things up. So thanks for watching, guys, and or listening. And take care. Bye. 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 Bye.